Of course, it was during the second phase of this foster care that the famous incident of shaq sadr of opening up of the heart occurred. And this is an incident that we have no doubt about because the Quran references, because there are authentic ahadith about it, because the Sahaba saw the line on the chest of the Prophet ﷺ that showed that it had been opened up. So this is clearly something that we believe in. When the Prophet ﷺ was four years old, Anas ibn Malik narrates, the hadith is in Sahih Muslim, so there's an authentic hadith, no question about it, that Jibreel came to the Prophet ﷺ when he was playing with the other children. When, when Jibreel came, the other children ran away, they're scared. The Prophet ﷺ stood his ground. As a four-year-old kid, he's displaying bravery. He stood his ground. What do you want from me? And Jibreel came and overpowered him. Sara'ahu. This means that he was struggling. Four-year-old kid is fighting an angel. The strongest angel Allah has created. But he's not going to go without a fight. Again, this shows the determination of the Prophet Muhammad So Jibreel forced him on the ground. You can't fight Jibreel. He forced him on the ground and he opened up his chest. Shaqqa sadrahu. It's just two words. Opened up his chest. How, what, all of this Allah knows. Jibreel does not need instruments to do what Allah wants him to do. He opened up his chest and he took his heart out. And he took out a black slither, a black portion from the heart. And he threw it away. And he said, هَذَا حَظُّ الشَّيْطَانِ مِنْكَ This is shaitan's portion that he had in you. Pause here for a sec before I continue the hadith. Every child that is born, shaitan pricks him as soon as it is born. According to our Prophet ﷺ, and I believe him completely because I'm a Muslim, our Prophet ﷺ said that is why babies cry when they come out of the womb. Because the child pricks him, out of um, the shaitan pricks him out of jealousy, out of hatred, out of anger. Shaitan wants to harm the child as soon as it comes out of the womb. Literally, as soon as it comes out, this is the hatred and animosity of shaitan. Because Allah preferred Adam and the children of Adam over him, so shaitan has become our enemy even from the cradle up until the grave. So as soon as the child is born, shaitan pricks him, prods him, and some type of element, Allah knows how and what, but this hadith demonstrates, some type of element is put into the child. Allah creates the child pure. Shaitan attempts to corrupt it from, literally not day one, minute one. Shaitan begins the corruption process right from the beginning. And there's something then, Allah knows, we're never going to do this, is ilm al ghayb that has some type of connection, some type of contact. This is perhaps how shaitan whispers into us. This is how, now remember, shaitan does not ever control us. Shaitan doesn't have a control panel like a, uh, these games you girls, you guys and girls play, we and all that, just press buttons. And, no, no, shaitan cannot do that. No. Nobody can blame shaitan. Allah, shaitan forced me. No. Shaitan does not force. Allah says in the Quran on the day of judgment, when mankind will say to shaitan, why did you do this to us? Shaitan will respond, مَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ sultan. I didn't have powers over you. I didn't control you. إِلَّا Except one thing, أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي I called you and you guys responded. That was the control I had. I seduced and enticed you, you guys responded. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't come and blame me. This conversation is in the Quran. Don't come and blame me, go blame yourselves. I didn't have any power over you. So, what, what this type of relationship is, Allah knows best. But it appears that this allows the shaitan access to whisper into our thoughts. That's really all that it is. That we get these bad thoughts, not coming from us. And by the way, when you get a very evil thought, a blasphemous thought, no, this is from shaitan. It's not from you. It's not from your heart of iman. This is from shaitan. Something really vulgar, vile, bad comes in. You get a desire to do something and you're wondering, where did that come from? You know, the answer is from shaitan. And your job is to fight it. Because it's just a whisper. It's not a control. So, that relationship was cut off at the age of four. And this is proven by another hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, that every child that is born, shaitan assigns, shaitan meaning iblis, the big shaitan, assigns a qareen to that person. Every one of us has a qareen, right now, right here. Maybe not in the masjid, inshallah, they're outside. But all of us have a qareen. They are with us 24-7. 
They know us better than our mothers and our spouses and our children because they're with us. What is the job of the Qareen? Just to whisper bad things. That's it. Now look at the hatred that Shaytan and his cohorts have for us. Wallahi, they spend their whole lives just trying to misguide us. That why? Jealousy and hate, hatred and anger. Why did Allah choose you over us? We should have been chosen. This jealousy and hatred, Shaytan assigns a Qareen to every one of us. We all have our Qareens. And the purpose of the Qareen is to whisper these evil thoughts. So the Sahaba said, even you, Ya Rasulullah, you have a Qareen? He said, even I have a Qareen. Except that Allah helped me against him, and now he's accepted Islam, and he only whispers good things to me. So, the Prophet's Qareen whispers good things. And this hadith, again, it relates to this point. That whatever relationship shaitan might have had, is completely gone. There is no other uh, more relationship because Jibreel took it out. He took it out. And then he washed the heart in a golden cup of Zamzam. And then he put it back. So he washed the heart and he put it back and he sealed it up. He put his hand like this and the heart sealed up. So we believe the first open heart surgery was performed by Jibreel upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa because it is a physical taking out of the heart. It is not just a spiritual thing. It is a physical taking out of the heart. So when the children, uh, the, 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 the foster brother and Shayma, who he was playing with, uh, when the children ran away, they ran back and they said, and they're looking in the distance that there's a man throwing him on the floor, putting blood in and this and that. So they come screaming and running that our brother has died, our brother has been killed, a man has abducted him, a man has killed him. And of course, Harima and others, they became so worried, they come running outside and they found the Prophet Sallallahu sitting, his face is pale. SubhanAllah, not wailing, not screaming, not crying, he's the brave, he was the bravest four-year-old the world has ever seen. He's pale, he's suffered something, but he's controlling the crying and the wailing. He's sitting there, you can t sense the fear, the, the terror, but he's not wailing and screaming. And when they uh, saw him, they saw those lines on his chest, and Anas ibn Malik says, I could see the traces of that line on his chest. Anas is narrating this hadith when the Prophet is around 60 years old. And he's saying, I could see the traces on that chest. Now if Allah had willed, it could have been a clean cut. Allah doesn't need to leave a line. You understand what I'm saying here? Allah doesn't need to leave a scar. Because Allah heals and completes. But Allah wants to demonstrate that something physical happened. And there is a physical line, like you have in a scar, that Anas ibn Malik saw. That I saw, I could see that line in the chest of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the end of the hadith in Sahih Muslim. Now, this incident of taking the heart out and washing it occurred one more time. Almost 45 years later, when the Prophet ﷺ went up to the journey of Al-Isra and Mi'raj, we're going to come back to that, Allah knows when, but we're going to come back to that, and we're going to mention again that Jibreel did the exact same thing. That he opened up the chest of the Prophet ﷺ before taking him on the journey. And he washed it in Zamzam water, and he put it back, but there's one difference. There was no black cloth the second time. There was no black clot the second time because the black clot has already been gotten rid of when the Prophet ﷺ is four years old. This incident was what concerned Halima. And she decided before anything else happens, let me quietly return the Prophet ﷺ to Amina. Because she doesn't know what's happening. Strange things now. She knows there's something about this child. Now this incident happens and she gets worried. And so she quietly returns the Prophet ﷺ to Amina. And that was when he was returned to the care of his mother, Amina. Of course, the, the, the spiritual benefits that we derive from this particular incident is that the Prophet is being prepared for a pure and clean life. The Prophet is being prepared to live the most respectable, the most dignified, the most pure life that man has ever known. And that is because it is the sunnah of Allah that all the Prophets have the perfect characters. It is the sunnah of Allah that the characters of the prophets are impeccable. That they cannot commit major sins. In Arabic we call it ma'asum or isma. The Prophet all, or all the prophets, not even our, just our Prophet all the prophets are ma'asum. Ma'asum from what? From major sins. They can commit minor infractions, they can get angry like Musa did, they can uh, do hasty things like Yunus did. All of these things are human uh, minor issues, but they cannot commit a major sin. 
They cannot commit any major sin. And by removing this, so the Prophet ﷺ was therefore raised in this uh, pure environment. Even though it was a spiritual cleansing, it was physically done. It's a spiritual cleansing of the heart, but it was physically done and it was revealed in the Quran. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, Alam nashrah laka sadrak. And uh, pretty much all the scholars of tafsir have said that this is a reference to opening up. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Have it, we opened up your chest, right? And we gave, uh, explained a number of weeks ago in the khutbah, I gave that there's a number of interpretations. One of them is that, and this is the majority interpretation, is that this is a reference to the cleansing of the heart. The other interpretation does not contradict it, and that is Allah is saying, Alam nashrah laka sadrak, i.e. by guiding you to Islam. Because Islam is also sharah as-sadr. Islam is called the opening up of the heart. So being guided to Islam makes your heart open to Allah's wisdom.